I am studying a dual degree of computer science and engineering, so I think I'm in a pretty reasonable position to talk about today's topic, which is, of course, computer science versus engineering. I kind of want to go over my experiences with both of them, uh, what is different about them, what's basically the same, things that you might want to consider if you're in a position where you need to choose between the two, because that's exactly where I was a couple of years ago. You know, I was graduating high school. I was thinking, uh, gee, what am I going to do at uni? I know that I like computers, but there are all of these courses offered to me. There's like computer science, there's computer engineering, there's software engineering, there's electrical engineering. Which one am I going to choose and why? So I'm going to go over my experiences with both computer science and uh, engineering today, because of course I'm doing both of them. And you'll note that I didn't actually end up making the choice that I was telling you about just now. I decided that I would do both. And I'm going to go over that at the end as well, why I decided to do that. So for engineering, I'm doing a dual major in electrical and computer engineering. And for computer science, I'm majoring in cybersecurity. So today I'm going to be mainly talking about computer engineering versus computer science, because those are the fields, obviously, that I have personal experience with. So first I want to talk about the maths. Now this is a subject that a lot of people don't necessarily like to talk about in computer science and engineering, but it is a big factor and it might be a deal breaker for you. So engineering, the mathematics that I had to take for electrical and computer engineering was far more difficult and far more involved than what I had to take for computer science. So both of them require you to take college level maths, uh, like intro. So like that's vectors, matrices, complex numbers, things like that. But really where it differed was in the kinds of math that you learn later on. So for example, for electrical engineering, I had to learn about partial and ordinary differential equations, which are essentially equations that describe how properties change with respect to time um, in a nutshell, when we're talking about physical systems. And I had to learn about Laplace transforms, Fourier transforms for signal analysis um, and things like that. But then in the computer science realm, the maths was a lot of discrete mathematics. So you learn about, you know, graphs, uh, Cayley tables, groups, fields, um, logic, like Boolean logic, truth tables, things like that. And that sort of stuff was actually really interesting to me because you can very easily make parallels with the Boolean logic stuff and how, like, you know, computers are working. Because computers use logic gates at a very low level to, um, to do computation. And that's really what computer science is all about. So speaking on computer science specifically for a minute here, I found that it was 80 to 95% of high level theory about um, computers and computation and programming. So what that means is essentially you learn very little about how computers work physically at a low level. I think there was, there was one course that I took as part of computer science that covered embedded systems and processor architecture and logic gates and things like that, where you had to wire up some circuits. And a lot of computer science students that were friends of mine actually kind of struggled with that. Um, but that's not to say that that's necessarily a bad thing. I'm very glad that that's in the course because I'm a strong believer that even if you're programming at a very high level, you want to have at least some kind of understanding of the low level innards of a computer because that you'll just intuitively write better code. But yes, as I, as I said before, you don't really learn about the physics of computers or how they work. Really like the stuff that I learned in computer science was more focused on, for example, programming paradigms, programming languages, compilers, uh, you know, theory of computation. So classical computers, like the ones that use uh, silicon and, and electronics, are not the only methods of computation that you can do. Like you saw, like back in the 40s, you cover the work of Alan Turing, for example, um, and you go over like Turing completeness. And one interesting way they explored that was on quantum computers and Conway's Game of Life. And you, you can see that even like something like Conway's Game of Life, which is about like cells and microorganisms and things like that. I can't exactly remember completely, but you can do computation on something like that. So it's not necessarily just focused on classical computers and electronics. It's a bit more cerebral. It's a bit more abstract. And that definitely appeals to me. Um, but specific but it's not it wasn't enough to sort of draw me into a computer science degree just by itself so what i noticed was that a lot of people that do the straight computer science degree are looking to get into for example web development or like full stack web development and i knew that that was not a career path that i ever really was going to be interested in right i was definitely definitely much more interested in low level stuff like where the software and the hardware really interact with each other and how computers, how our typical standard computers work, because that's, you know, I got my start in computers doing hackintoshing and building computers and 
you know, doing all that kind of low level stuff. And so that was really always where my heart lied. So at this point I was considering, okay, maybe computer science isn't for me because it has some of what I want, but it doesn't have all of it. So what about electrical and computer engineering? And this is where the gears really started turning for me. So I'm very interested in digital electronics, as I mentioned, but I'm actually not very good. I, I don't think I ever would have hacked it in a straight electrical engineering degree. Like you're never gonna catch me doing stuff with AC power or transformers or power stations or phases. That's just not what I'm good at. And I don't pretend to be good at that. And like I said before, maths isn't necessarily my strong point. And for that, you need much more maths than just you know some doing some stuff with embedded and digital electronics. So where the computer engineering major came in for me, that was really clutch. Because uh, as part of electrical engineering, for, for instance, like even if you're doing computer engineering, you'll learn about the physics of electrical circuits. You'll learn about magnetism. You'll learn about optics. That stuff is is pretty general uh, for you know for any kind of electronics engineering. You'll learn about circuit analysis, Kirchhoff's laws, Ohm's law. You'll learn about uh, signal analysis, as I mentioned before, Fourier and Laplace transforms for like AC signal analysis. But then where the computer engineering stuff comes in. You learn about semiconductors, transistors, op amps, and all this stuff is super cool because that's, you know, like CPUs are made up of transistors. So you'll learn all about that. Um, and you'll learn about, you know, uh, electromagnetic waves, which is part of how like RF and Wi-Fi works. You'll learn about advanced embedded systems and FPGAs. And at my university, there were two embedded systems team project courses. And in my opinion, those courses are some of the most valuable in the entire, um, in the entire degree. So that's where it really piqued my interest because I've always been more interested in where the software meets the hardware and how they interact. And so computer engineering, like computer engineering was really where I could, where I could do that. And so if you're interested in that and you're interested in um, like, okay, so computer science versus computer engineering. If I had to make a choice, I found computer engineering to be probably 70 to 85% focused on low level concepts. There was one systems programming course where they took you over Linux and Unix and things like that, but that was a shared course with computer science. You both have to do that one. So if I had to make a choice between the two, this is kind of what I would base it on. So computer science, if you are not especially interested in, or maybe not particularly good at, um, the physics or mathematics of how computers work at a, at a very low level. You don't really care for C programming, digital electronics, never really interested in you. And, and that's fine. Like people are interested in different things. If you want to learn about compilers and programming languages and, and, you know, software architecture and things like that, computer science is probably more for you. I'd, I'd be honest. Um, but if you are like me, where you are really interested in the low level stuff, how, where software meets hardware, then I would probably consider computer engineering. If you don't really care for the computer side at all, right? Like you don't really care about programming or, you know, how microprocessors work, then straight electrical engineering might be for you. If you, if you're pretty keen on like power systems and things like that, then yeah, straight electrical engineering might be for you. So now my personal choice to do both. Here's why. So I found myself in a position where I really liked the high level concepts of um, computer science. So I was very interested in the things I mentioned to you before. So pro uh, programming language architecture, programming paradigms, compilers, things like that. I was very interested in that, but there were other parts of the computer science degree that I was definitely, definitely not interested in, like anything to do with web development. I, there were parts of the electrical engineering and computer engineering program that I was interested in, like embedded systems, transistors, op amps, FPGAs, but there were also components that I wasn't so much interested in, like microwave engineering or, um, you know, optics engineering. So really, if I did both of them, I could pick and choose the components that I liked from either. So I could choose, you know, to do theory of computation as part of my program. I could choose to do um, some programming language stuff. I could choose to do the embedded systems from the computer engineering degree. I could pick and choose the parts that I liked and sort of not do the ones that I didn't, if that makes sense. Like you weren't, I, and like, so for example, functional programming interests me, but it's not something I really particularly care about doing as part of my degree. So for instance, I just decided not to do the Haskell course that was offered for computer science. So really it was about sort of getting the best of both worlds for me and my career and where I want to go. Because I don't really want to do web development, so a straight computer science degree would not have given me the skill set that I need. And that's what it comes down to. If you've got some sort of field that you want to go into, try and envision the skill set that you are needing for that 
and then make your choice based on that. So for example, if you are looking to get into web development, the electrical and computer engineering stuff might not actually be very valuable for you. It might probably just be wasting your time. You could do software engineering or you could do computer science and you would get the skill set that you need for that. But if you're looking to do anything in embedded systems like me, you know, or digital electronics, then just doing the straight computer science degree, you're not really going to get the skill set that you need to do that particular position. So really for me, it was about optimizing that and, and where I want to go. And I want to go into like firmware engineering, um, digital electronics, maybe a bit of systems programming. And so I thought that the dual degree was really the sweet spot for me. And yes, it's long, like it's a six year program. Well, technically it's five and a half, but some of the electives I wanted were only offered in semester two at my university. So I have to take an extra semester, but I, I honestly wouldn't have made a different choice because I think in the long run for my career and where I'm wanting to go and the things I'm interested in, I made the right choice. And maybe it's the right choice for you too, maybe it's not. Let me know in the comments what you're studying, where you wanna go with your career, um, and, and what kind of choices, like what kind of things influenced your choice to do the particular thing you did. I'm really interested to hear about it. Cheers.